Hi everybody and welcome to Garden Style. Well, been out of the loop for a little bit for the last couple of weeks, but today I am here to talk about conifers. Conifers as opposed to deciduous trees. And your conifers include a lot of different trees, but primarily it's going to include things like your cedar trees, cypress, spruce, and I intend to go over about two or three different varieties with you today just to kind of get you familiar with conifers and some of the uses that you can use them for out in the garden. Now, unlike deciduous trees, which lose their leaves uh, during the fall, and we're right smack in the middle of that right now here in October, where you see a lot of the leaves dropping and you end up with these bare trees during the winter time. Now, the cool thing with conifers is they're evergreen and they're going to hang on to their leaves throughout the entire season. Now they do have a little bit of needle drop or leaf drop during the fall, but that's primarily on the insides of the trees. And that's very normal for them to start dropping some of their older leaves, but at least they stay green and hang on to the majority of their green throughout the winter time. So the really cool thing with conifers is, is they are like the foundation plants to your garden. If you're starting out with a blank slate, I always encourage folks to start with their conifer trees and their broadleaf evergreens first before they go and plant anything else in the yard. And the reason for that is they kind of hold their place throughout the entire season. Some of the conifers can also be some of your biggest trees that stay in your yard. Now granted, there are deciduous trees that get pretty large as well, but your conifers can get quite large or they can also come as dwarfs. And that's some of the things that I wanted to cover with you today. So as you can see, I'm kind of out in the forest, <laughs> out here in the nursery, and we have a huge selection of evergreens. And we usually stock them up during the fall, just due to the fact that in the winter time, it is the perfect time to be planting evergreens. Um, as long as you're not, as your ground isn't freezing or it's frozen by the time you get to November, usually by September, October, November, you are pretty safe in putting in evergreens into the ground. Now, why is the winter the best time to put in evergreens? Well, you have Mother Nature working for you. And while they may be seeming kind of dormant on the top, there is a whole bunch of action going on underneath uh, as far as their roots are concerned. And you've got Mother Nature to help you out. Not only are the temperatures cooler, but the soil stays moist and they're able to get established a lot sooner than if you were to put them in in the spring. And they're not suffering as much stress. So if you put them in in October, you've got a good six, seven, eight months before the really hot weather hits for them to get established into the ground. And it's so much easier on them. It's a whole lot less stress. And it's a great way to start out a brand new garden with at least some evergreens during the winter time before you get real excited and start putting in your deciduous trees, your perennials and your annuals in the springtime. So I encourage all of you, if you haven't started to go out and shop for your evergreens, now is the time. It's usually when the nurseries have a really good selection, uh, especially here in the Northwest, as our winters are pretty tepid here and we can pretty much plant year round because our ground doesn't freeze. So anyway, now I'm gonna go over some of the leaves that you are gonna find in conifers. And there can be a little bit of confusion here, so I hope to make this as clear as possible so that you understand what some of the differences are. Now here next to me, I'm going to start with this guy right off the bat. You can get needles on your conifers like your pines and your cedars, or you can get like a scaly type leaf like what you see here. And this just happens to be a Leyland cypress. Uh, this is probably one of our more popular trees that gets planted during the uh, winter time. Just because they can put on size really fast. They're super fast growers and you can get them with like a blue green type of uh, scaled leaf like what you see here these are kind of flat as you see on here and a lot of times they call these cedars but in fact they really are a cypress <laughs> and that's where some of the confusion lies sometimes just because they're going by what the leaves look like on some of these trees but this particular variety you have here is a Leyland cypress and these things can get quite tall they can get 20 to 30 feet tall and they grow extremely fast they can put on a foot to two feet in one season that's like from spring until fall. Um, in fact, on this particular tree right here, I can just tell by looking at him, he's already put two feet on uh, this particular year, just in this one season, and he's still sitting in a pot. He's not even in the ground yet. And these trees are utilized a lot for screening. So if you have a neighbor's house that you don't want to look at anymore, this would be a fabulous tree for that. 
but make sure to give them plenty of room because they have a branch spread as well. They can get as wide as 10, 15, 20 feet, depending on the variety that you purchase. But Leylands are well used, especially by landscapers, as screens between homes, along the back fence, um, or even for shade trees. Some people will prune off the bottom branches and utilize them as a shade tree once they get tall enough. But they're there to stay. It's something that you will see all year round and makes a nice permanent evergreen like huge hedge down one side of your yard if that's in fact what you need. So I just wanted to show you the leaves more than anything, um, how flat they are, and what some of the confusion can be between calling this a cedar or a cypress. The two kind of mix together and can actually be a part of the juniper family. Now, another specimen is this guy. Beautiful needles that you see here. This just happens to be a Diodor cedar. Now this isn't your typical cedar that most people think of. You think of the flat leaf as a cedar, but this is in fact a true cedar tree. And their needles actually grow in like clumps all the way around the branch. And this particular variety happens to be a golden Diodor cedar. So its new growth comes out in kind of this goldish color and as the temperatures drop, it actually turns a slight bronze color during the fall and the winter. And this has a real graceful habit to it. Its branches naturally want to weep when that's why a lot of people seem to like these particular trees. It's that lovely weeping structure that they happen to have. And this particular variety, Golden Diodor Cedar, can actually get up to 35 feet tall and about 15 feet wide. And that's actually pretty well behaved compared to some Diodor species. Some of the Diodors can get absolutely huge. They can get 40 to 50 feet tall and about 25 to 30 feet wide. So be very careful in reading your tags when it comes to purchasing conifers and be extremely careful as to where you're gonna place them. Make sure to give them plenty of room to spread so that you're not having to whack off their branches and ruin their natural weeping shape. They are a beautiful, gorgeous tree to be putting into your yard. And for those of us here in the Northwest where we've got nothing but green, having a little bit of gold or lime green standing out in your landscape is amazing and looks fantastic, especially in darker areas of your yard. These can take part sun to a little bit of shade. All of your conifers prefer really good drainage. There isn't a single one of them that wants to have wet feet. Um, so the trick is, once you get it in the first year, make sure to water it really well on its first year and then after that they can pretty much take care of themselves. Another thing I really like about conifers is they're super easy to take care of. So I wanted to show you this variety just because of its beautiful needles and what it has to offer. Now there's another variety here. Where did I put it? It's right behind me. <laughs> and that's this one right here. And you can see that this is kind of sort of similar to the cypress that I showed you, the Leyland cypress. However, the leaves on this tend to spread out a little bit more on its branches. And this also has kind of a bluish greenish color to it, which is really pretty. Not quite like a Colorado spruce, but real similar. And this is called a Chaparral Arizona Cypress. And this is kind of a little guy. He's actually a baby. Um, some of these we just got in, but they have these beautiful sculptural look to them. They um, get that blue ice kind of color and it stands out amazingly during the winter time and I really like them. I probably have two or three of these in my yard um, when I got it started a few years ago. So this guy definitely wants full sun at least six hours and its average size can get about 20 to 30 feet tall and about 8 to 12 feet wide. But what a beautiful, I just want to pick them up so you can kind of see. He just has a beautiful shape to him. They smell amazing. Um, and just have this great look to them. And they can withstand drought, uh, drier conditions. That's why they call it the Arizona Cypress. Um, that's actually where a lot of you're going to find a lot of them that just grow naturally in Arizona. This particular tree, of course, doesn't have any blooms. Um, just about all of your conifers are a cone type conifer. That's how they reproduce themselves. So you can get your typical pine cone, which they form, and then they start to open up and let go of their seeds or you can get really teeny tiny cones. And on some of your conifers, that's actually an ornamental look to the tree. It actually adds a little addition to the tree when they start to get their cones. Um, but that's how they reproduce themselves, unlike deciduous trees who actually flower and make seeds and then drop them. They, of course, produce their own little pine cones and hold those seeds in there until they're ready to open. 
and then release the seeds onto the ground. And that's how they reproduce themselves. But wanted to introduce you to just you know a few varieties of conifers. There are so many of them out there, just really graceful, beautiful specimens that you can put in your yard. They're extremely versatile and of course help to fill up the landscape and give you that permanent foundation that doesn't disappear in the winter time so that you have something you can look at. So I have the names down below of all the ones that I've just mentioned. I of course want to cover more with you. I just wanted to get into the conifer family today, especially as we start creeping closer to the holidays. This is a perfect time, excellent time, to start putting in evergreens into your yard. All right, you guys, sorry I've been out for so long. Uh, needless to say, we've been extremely busy here at the nursery getting things buttoned up. We're actually starting to look into winter, so we're already starting to migrate plants into the greenhouse, starting to winterize some of our plants, and that's kept us very, very busy uh, over the last few weeks, as well as last minute sales at the end of the season. More and more people are realizing this is a really good time to start, start putting in trees and shrubs during the fall and winter. Okay. A lot of you have been asking me what zone I'm in. I actually live in zone 8. That would be 8A. Uh, you go on the other side of the water, it would be 8B. <laughs> so if you're wondering about hardiness uh, or what zone that I'm living in, that's where I'm at. I'm in zone 8. Okay, you guys. So far, it has been a fabulous fall for us. We've had a two-week stretch of 60, 70 degree weather. We're finally going to see some rain by Tuesday. I actually will be really happy to see some rain here in the next couple of days so I can stop watering out in the yard. But uh, I'll be back again to cover broadleaf evergreens. And that's your typical evergreen shrubs like camellias, escalonia, uh, Japanese holly. Those are what we call broadleaf evergreens as opposed to your needle evergreens, your conifers. All right, you guys, of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave all that in the description box down below, or you can get a hold of me at GardenStyleNW.com or my email at GardenStyleNWest at gmail.com. I want to thank all the new subscribers who have signed on recently. The channel keeps growing, and I intend to keep inspiring and showing you more plants as we move into the wintertime and, of course, next spring. Meanwhile, take care, and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.